Oh, 
of adoration to him because that is our connection we are here to worship him let's open our mouths and worship our king of kings lord we just want to praise you and we just want to offer our sacrifice of praise to you lord because we know you are worthy you are deserving of our praise you are the one lord that is enthroned among our praises lord lord you are the king of kings lord that has lord help us overcome everything lord that is going before us lord and you are the one with the great power lord to continue to strengthen us lord lord because the joy of the strength is in you lord lord we just lift your name up lord the way that we lift our face towards the heavens lord 
we see and experience a Lord, a God who answers our prayers, who helps us when we are down, who lifts us when we need help. Lord, as we come again this time of the year, which is close to Easter, Lord, the story is rolling again in our heads, in our minds, in our hearts. And it's a story about love. It's a story about your great love for us. Lord, help us remember this story and help us continue to put our faith in you. Because when we remember the great love you gave for us, the great love that shows that our sins can be forgiven, Lord, you become our living hope. for us, Lord, the same way we want to profess our love for you, Lord. We want to submit to everything that you have for us, Lord. Your plan, your will, your great love for us, Lord. We want to experience it all. We want to receive it all. So brothers and sisters, if you want to receive, let's respond it right now. Let's tell the Lord right now, Lord, I receive you. I want you. I love you, Lord. In our own way, let's respond to the great love of God and let's commit ourselves to Him again. Let's open our places to our Lord God. Lord, you want to respond to your great Lord? Your great Lord. Spirit, continue to dwell in this place, Lord, as we call on the Holy Spirit to just have His way in this place. Because, Lord, we want to worship You with all our heart, mind, and strength.
receive his love right now. Because the Lord is forgiving our sin and shame. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for forgiving our sins. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, Lord. Because, Lord, we are sure we do not deserve your grace. Yet, you still keep on giving. You still keep on loving. grasp hold. Let's keep that love of God and put it in our hearts because we know whatever promises that God has given to us it's always yes and amen. We receive your love. Oh Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Indeed, we receive the love of Jesus Christ. Indeed, we give our love to Jesus Christ. God wants is our all of everything that we have, our might, our <clears throat> everything that we have, our soul, our time, even our finances, our money. So as we ask the ushers to collect the tithes and offerings, let us uh, see some ministries that needs our concern. Since the finances that God gives us as God, let us always be a cheerful leader, giver, for we know God always provides. We don't need to be afraid that when we give to God, we will be in lacking. But the more you give to God, the more your faith will grow. And the more you will see that God is faithful to his promises. He says, when we give him, when we, fulfill, when we fulfill the commands he asks from us by giving him the tithes and offerings, he will be there and faithful to give us all of our needs. This month is our harvest event month. month. As the, 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 the name denotes is... We are going to harvest the lives of people. We are going to bring them to our church, okay? Since we are in the fifth week, five week TGI, uh, TGI campaign, Thank God it's Friday campaign, we are already in the invitation part. We go, we pray, we connect, we serve, share, and invite. It's P C S S I. P stands for pray, connect, serve, share, and invite. So dear brothers and sisters, let us invite our friends to come and celebrate with us next Friday, uh, next Sunday, our Easter celebration. Do you have this invitation with you? Have you won? Have you get one or two or three? Take this home and invite, do invite your friends. If you can see them, you can meet them, get this and do uh, invite them. If you don't have it in our HOC, we have an e-invitation. You can use it also to invite your friends to come over, your family, your, the, your neighborhood, okay? Always remember, we are here because God has called us to... Yes. Search for the lost. Si Ors lang ata yung HOC. So search the, for the lost... To bring back the strays, to buy him at the injured, and strengthen the weak, so that Lord will be our God. Okay. Yes, we are united. We are all the family in the family of Christ Canaan ministry. So, dear brothers, brothers and sisters, remember next week is our Easter celebration, and you have this, and do take it home and invite your friends. We have also the three-in-one guide. I don't know if you got one last week. If you haven't got one, please do remember to take it home so that we are in the same page when we are uh, having our LRT, our listening room time with God. Remember, God is always waiting for us daily. Okay, so start the day with listening to the words of God. 
For the scripture memory for this week is found in Matthew 11:28. Let us all read it together. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11:28. I am sure many of you are burdened, or many of you are already very weary. Are you tired? Yes. <laughs> okay, now let's remember the verse. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. God has promised that he will give us rest. Okay, if we come to him, okay, that is a promise. Okay, we have a long weekend, so really plan your time to rest with God. Okay, rest in his presence. Okay, I don't know where you are going, but really ask you to rest in Christ. So let us, uh, let us all stand up. Let us pray for today's worship. Let us pray for our heart that every day, as God waits of, wait for us, we are going to give him our time and we listen to his voice. So let's raise our voice. Uh, let's us also pray for next, week, next week's Easter celebration. So let us all raise our voices and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that we are in this church, that we have the same goal to search for the lost, to bring back the strays, to bind up the injured, to strengthen the weak, so that you, Lord, will be their God. Lord, we thank you that our church is also always giving us opportunity to go out and search for the lost. So, Lord, help each and every one of us. Strengthen us. Give us courage. Give us, give us people that we can invite for us to be able to bring them to this Easter celebration. Lord, we ask of you, Lord. We are here. We want you to use us. Here is our hands. Here is our feet. Use it for your glory so that the people around us may know you. As we celebrate Palm Sunday today, as we rejoice, Lord, there are many people who haven't known you. Lord, use us so that they too will have the faith in you and they hope, have hope for the future. Lord, we also ask that you use this opportunity, Lord, during our Easter celebration, that as people come, they will hear the gospel and they will really meet you and they will... Hearts will be open to receive you, to become their Savior and Lord. So use each and every one of us, your brothers and sisters, to go out and invite the people. And as we have this long weekend, help us who are weary, physically weary, we can have rest. Those who are spiritually weary, we can rest in you as we have our listening room time with you. Thank you, Lord, for your word today. Bless each and every one of us. Give us ears that can listen to your word and give our reverent words that comes from you. We give you all of the time. In, you, in the most precious name, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Dear brothers and sisters, let us turn to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. Renewal from Desperation. Okay, we are in, this, in a new series, Heart Renewal. I will read the ad verses. Dear brothers and sisters, please do read the event verses. First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1. There was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zophite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Suf, an Ephraimite. Year after year, this man went from this town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord. Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the, son, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Yeah. 
But to Hannah, he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. And she made a vow, saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give your, give your, sorry, I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will be used on his head. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked for him, of him. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home in, at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. Hannah conceived and gave him birth to son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked of the Lord for him. Dear brothers and sisters, do take your seat. Let's give the rest of our time to our Reverend Joa as he gives the sermon today. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Okay, uh, next week would be our big day for our Easter, so we would be celebrating Easter, uh, so hopefully uh, we would be able to come early and at the same time to uh, connect with those friends or uh, guests that had come to our service. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank God for a very wonderful and uh, spirit-filled joint worship last March 19th. Okay, so a lot of people, actually, uh, there are more people who came to attend uh, the joint worship than attending our regular worship celebration. Okay, that means to say, okay, okay, all of us have enjoyed okay, the joint worship celebration. And I believe that we have a good fellowship uh, with our fellow brothers and sisters in Nankan as well as in Uku. So may God continue to unite us together okay, for the mission that God has given to us. And what is that mission? to search for the lost, to bring back the straight, to bind up the injured, and to strengthen the weak so that I, the Lord, will be their God. So this is what God has given to us, the mission. And this is the very purpose why we are here, why we are meeting. Not for us to have a, have a church wherein we find a home, we find Christ, and we enjoy only. But rather, we would be able to be sent by God to go out and to uh, be able to reach out to those who are in need of the Lord Jesus. So that uh, they would be able to experience God, okay, as their God, and experience the life that we are experiencing as well. So this is the mission, and this is for each one of us. Uh, last uh, March, okay, last, last, starting last March, okay, we have started to go to Nankang, okay, to have a cell group there, okay. So we have already went there for twice uh, every other week. So uh, we went to a, uh, uh, a dorm. Okay, so which uh, one of our members in Uku is working in there. And so they have uh, around 60 people uh, uh, living in that dorm. So the first time that we went there, okay, we have uh, 14 people who came to attend. You know, the place is very small, smaller than the small room that we have uh, at the back. Okay. And so the first time we went there, there are 14 who came to attend. Now some of them are Christians, some of them are not Christians. And so the second time that we went there, 20 people came. 
And so uh, with this small area, so some of them would be sitting on the sofa, some of them would be standing, and some of them would be just sitting on the floor. Okay? But as we are going there, one uh, our members would lead the worship and I would lead uh, in uh, sharing the word of God and then to discuss the word of God. Okay? You know, these two times that we went there, okay, I've seen something. Okay? There are a lot of people who long for something. Even the Christians, they have been uh, out of the church for many, many uh, years that they have been in Taiwan because there is no church in that area. And so they long for that. And uh, as we went there, you know, we could, I could see the eyes that they are searching for something. They are longing to have this kind of fellowship. In fact, after the service, one of the members came and he said, Pastor, paki selfie. Let us have selfie. So we take a picture. And he said he was going to send it uh, to her, uh, to his wife. Okay, telling his wife na ito yung pastor na dumating sa uh, bordol namin that uh, has been leading us. And he was excited that there was a meeting that is going on there. And so, you know, I believe that not only in that place that there are a lot of people that is looking for a home, looking for Christ. But there are a lot of places, okay, people are looking. They are searching that they would be able to find God and that they would be able to find a home away from home. And that is why as we uh, concluded our joint worship uh, celebration, we said we need to be what? The home of Christ. We need to be the home of Christ wherein Christ would be found through us and that a home will be found in our midst. Okay, you, you, God may uh, help us. May God uh, use us. And that is why a lot of our uh, mga activities in the church, okay, every uh, meetings that we have, okay, especially mga special meetings, you know, we are catering, we are giving opportunity for us to be able to invite people so that we would be able to touch them with the gospel of Christ. So, next week would be our Easter celebration. And our theme would be Jesus, uh, no, the weight lifter. You know, in life, we experience a lot of uh, burden. Okay? And so, Jesus is the one who could be able to lift that weight in us for us to experience rest that comes from God. And so with this, may God help us that we would go out and invite people. So we have one more week. If you need mga invitation card, we have a lot in the back. Now we would be having posting the uh, e uh, line, okay? so you could uh, just send them through social media, okay, mga uh, JPEG, okay, to invite people in. And we hope that through this harvest event, Easter harvest event, we would be able to have a very good harvest of soul for the Lord. Okay, so tell the person beside you. Take one invitation and invite your friends. Okay, like. Okay, so take one invitation, huh? Not for you. For you to invite other people. Okay, so we hope that we would be able to uh, sit full, uh, full house this uh, next week. Okay, but uh, remember, for us as hosts, we need to come earlier so that we would be able to uh, connect with all those guests that we have invited. Okay, ah, so may God bless us. Okay. Now, this month, uh, we are focusing on one area wherein we could be able to help us to be more effective in reaching out to other people. This year, God wants us to transform your life, natin, to change our life from inside out. And this month, we will be focusing on renewing our hearts. Okay, renewing our hearts. Now, heart renewal in 1 Thessalonians 3, 13. Let's all read. May He strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father. When our Lord Jesus comes with all His holy ones. Okay. Now, He said that may we be strengthened, uh, may, may, may He strengthen your heart so that you will be blameless and holy. You know, every day we face a lot of different circumstances, challenges in life that always affect our hearts. You know, the Bible tells us one uh, thing. He said that, you know, the heart is very important because the heart is where it moves us and it uh, uh, accomplishes things. You know, in Proverbs 4.23, he said, Guard your hearts above all else, for it determines the course of our lives. If our hearts is troubled, you know, we would not have any uh, time or strength okay, to follow God, to pursue the purpose of God for our lives. Only when we experience a heart that is, has been strengthened, that we would be able to uh, face all of our circumstances in the midst of all the problems that we have, still, because we are, have been strengthened, we have the strength and the power to continue to pursue the purpose of God and the will of God in our lives. And so this month, we will be focusing on how 
to renew our heart or how to face some of uh, the things that causes the heart okay, the, to despair or the burden of life, the hopelessness that we feel or the drives for working very, very hard or how do we depend on God. Okay, so we would be dealing with all of this issue this month through our uh, message. Okay, and so may God help us that uh, we would be able to uh, be renewed in our hearts, find strength, so that we would be able to pursue the purpose of God in our lives. Now today I want to share with you this uh, message, renewal from desperation. Renewal from desperation from First Samuel chapter 1, verse 1 to 20. Okay, so let's go back again to our Bible. Okay, so I want us to read again, although medyo, uh, it's very long. But let us read and then see uh, what we could learn about how we could be able to find renewal especially when we are desperate in life or when we are going through difficult times that you know uh, that we felt hopeless that we felt very despair in life okay how do we overcome it okay let's go back again to the bible and let us all read together from verse 1 to verse 20 huh? and as we read may god uh, help us to see and to hear what god has given to us through this passage okay let's all read from verse 1 start from verse 1 there was a certain man from Ramathim, a Zophite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jehoram, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Suf, and Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah and the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh where Hopni and Pinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her. And the Lord had closed her womb. And because the Lord had closed her womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Elkanah, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, that priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorpost of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. And she made the vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long will you keep on getting drunk? Get rid of your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May my her servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his word. You know, from this passage that we have read, okay, we know that there is a man by the name of Elkanah. He had two wives. One is Hannah and another is Penina. Okay. Now, Hannah was barren, cannot, uh, cannot bear a child, and so he, she doesn't have any children. But Penina, Penina had children. So every year, the family would go to Shiloh, okay, to the temple to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord. And so we read that uh, every time when they were there, Penina would always provoke Hannah in order to irritate her, torment and humiliate her and because she was childless. And this happened year after year. Not only one time, but year after year, she would be provoked. Okay. 
And so, uh, in all of this, prov uh, this provocation that has been going on, I believe, you know, Hannah suffered a lot. Okay? And he was uh, very pressured. Okay? Now, because in the Old Testament times, barrenness, or if you cannot uh, have the baby, it was called a curse. Okay? And she was an embarrassment to her husband as well. Okay? You know, husband actually has the right to divorce his wife if she was unable to produce any children. And maybe this is the reason why Elkanah had two wives. Now, maybe uh, Hannah is the first wife, and because she cannot bear any child, so Elkanah doesn't want to divorce Hannah because she loves Hannah. So in order for uh, this family to have children, so she, uh, he had to have another wife. So he married again another uh, by the name of Han uh, Hannah Penina. Penina. Okay. And so because, maybe because of this. Now, children were an important part of economic standing for a pa family during the Old Testament. Okay. Large families were a symbol of status and of wealth. It is a symbol of status and a symbol of wealth. So just imagine the pressure that Hannah goes through. She encountered every day people wondering why she cannot have children. Ano bang problema? And they would talk about her. They will use another kind of eyes in looking at her. And so the worst part is for her to be intimidated, intimidated by and provoked by her rival, okay, her husband's second wife. Okay. So every day, especially when they would go to the Shiloh to worship the Lord, just imagine the torment. Just imagine, you know, every time the hopelessness that she would feel because, you know, she cannot do anything about it. She cannot have children, and it is maybe it is not her fault. And the Bible described what is going on in the heart of Hannah with different adjectives. Okay, let us look at this. You know, in verse 8, it says he was, she was downhearted. And in verse 10, okay, it described that Hannah is in bitterness of soul. And in verse uh, 11, okay, she felt miserable. Okay, in verse 15, he was deeply troubled. And in verse 16, he is uh, in great anguish and grief. And so all of these words describe what Hannah has been experiencing. You know, just imagine the desperation that Hannah had felt and she cannot do anything about it. Okay, desperation consists of what? It consists of mental as well as emotional and behavioral exhaustion. Now, ano ibig sabihin? It means that she is tired, being tired of many accumulated disappointment and sadness. You know, when every disappointment would be accumulated, every time of sadness would accumulate, you know, it will bring something, a feeling of desperation. And this is what Hannah felt in her life. The desperation of Hannah having a child and being ridiculed, being talked about, okay, being provoked, okay, and then uh, being shamed by her rival. I don't know, my brothers and sisters, have you ever experienced, feel these kinds of desperation in your life? Maybe you don't have that kind of intensity like Hannah. But I believe all of us have one way or another experienced a lot of uh, feeling of desperation, isn't it? Maybe it is our work. No matter how we work, no matter how hard we do things, you know, yung sweldo natin, ganun pa rin. Okay, you know, the, whenever, whatever what we do, you know, our, our company are not raising our, our salary, okay? Uh, but we have a good news, isn't it? Uh, next week, starting next week, okay, we would be receiving, magano, 6,000, okay? Yun ang additional that God has given to us, okay? So maybe we are struggling in our work. Maybe the people that we work with for many, many years, Pero, you know, they are always against us. They are always trying to find fault in us. You know, it is very despairing to work with them. And maybe our children, no matter how we say things, they are always fighting with us. They are not obedient. And maybe, you know, they are causing a lot of trouble. Or even in our personal life. There are things that, you know, it would go on again and again. Maybe it is a problem that has been one day, a week, a month, or even a year. But as we pray and as we deal with it, nothing happens, nothing changes. And that is a feeling of desperation. Hannah felt this desperation every year when he went to worship because her rival would provoke her. But there was a day wherein she experienced something that is different. After she went there in desperation, he was able to experience a freedom from his depressed situation. 
And so, how did it uh, happen and what it had been said? In verse 18, after a long uh, things that he had done, in verse 18, the Bible said that, she said, may your servant find favor in, her, uh, in, in your eyes. He, she was speaking with Eli. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer uh, no, downcast. She went home. He was able to eat. She was not downcast. He was not sad. Why? Because something happened in, in her heart that God has dealt with, helping him to get out of her desperation, the feeling of desperation. Today, we want to learn from Hannah how we could be able to get out of any desperate situation or the feeling of desperation in our lives. So how do we get out of our de uh, uh, desperation that we have felt because of things that is happen happening in our lives? Okay, Let us go back again to this passage. In verse 9 and 10, let us all read together. Here it says, once, okay, when they went many times and this time, once when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli, the priest, was sitting on a chair by the doorposts of the Lord's temple. In bitterness of soul, Hannah wept much and prayed to the Lord. You know, one of the things that Hannah did, you know, he had this uh, uh, being uh, oppressed by young rivals, being provoked, okay? And even when she was being provoked, in the Bible, if you look at verse 7, Okay, this went on year after year, isn't it? Okay, and then when she was provoked, she wept and would not eat. And then the husband in verse 8, Halkana, her husband, would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why, do you, uh, why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? And so the husband came and uh, encouraged, okay, comfort her. And then asked, why are you downcast? What is wrong with you? You know, it is, is it because you don't have uh, any children? That's, is that the problem? You know, she could uh, uh, verse out and complain about what the second uh, wife has been doing, isn't it? She could say a lot of things about what this uh, uh, Penina has been doing in provoking her. But she did not say anything. And so this did not say anything. And in his bitterness of soul, he did one thing. That uh, when they had finished eating, so he stood up and he went to the temple. Wherein he came before God. And he wept and prayed before the Lord. And so he poured out, out of his anguish. We saw from another verse okay, what she did. Okay, in verse 12, okay, as she kept on praying to the Lord, Elijah, Eli observed her mouth. Not only he went to pour out, prayed out, but he was keep on praying, persevering, keep on praying. Verse 13, Hannah was praying in her heart and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought that she was drunk. Okay, so he continued to pray okay, in her heart. And then in verse 15 and 16, not so my Lord, Hannah replied, I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out of my soul to the Lord. And so what he did is pouring out of young grief to the Lord. Okay. And then in verse 16, he continued to speak to Eli. He said, do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. You see, out of her great anguish and grief, out of his, uh, uh, what he felt, the desperation, he was pouring out her soul to who? To God. And even when Eli come and asked, she did not uh, reveal what uh, she, her, her heart's anguish is. He never poured out whatever he's going through to Eli. Okay. You know, a lot of people would, always, would come to me. You know, they will come and then they will pour out their problems to me and then they will tell me a lot of things that has been happening. So usually, we go to pastor and when we pour out, isn't it? Or sometimes we go to our friends or to our family members or to our spouses and we pour out whatever is in our hearts. But, you know, you notice that whenever we pour out, maybe it seems that you feel better at that time. But after that, ano na? Balik na naman. Because no matter how much we pour out on people, no, no, nothing happens. Our hearts, the desperation, the hopelessness doesn't change. It will still be there. And whenever we see other people, it would always trigger what we feel inside us. But here, Hannah did one thing. He went before the Lord and he poured out his desperation on the Lord. And because he poured out his desperation on her desperation on the Lord, I believe that God came and become a comfort and strength to her. 
My brothers and sisters, only God could change what, how we feel. Only God could be able to give us the peace and joy that we needed. Only God would be able to help us in times of our desperation. That is why the first thing we need to do in order to get out of any desperation that we find ourselves in, we need to pour out our desperation to God. We need to come before God because it is only God who could be able to change the way we feel. He is the one who could give peace that surpasses all understanding. He is the one who could be able to give us the hope that is found in Him. And when we come to Him, we will find help and we will find grace. Now, during the world, uh, world War II, the great Scottish city had been bombed very heavily by the German. Especially, they would bomb the Scottish shipyards okay, because that is where the Navy is. And so one time, there was a family living just uh, uh, not very far from this shipyard. Okay. And so that day, they started to hear bombing that is bomb, uh, the, 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 uh, bomb that is going out. Okay. And they know that they are in trouble. But at that day, you know, the father is not at home. And only the mother and, the, and, and uh, their son is there. And so when the mother heard about all the sound, she know that, you know, there was uh, a trouble that is coming. And so they put out the light, and so they huddled together in darkness. They were listening for the bomb falling on the shipyards. There was tremendous deafening noises. I don't know if you uh, uh, hear. Uh, in Taiwan, you know, the first time that we come here, right? uh, during the Chinese New Year, okay, so pagkatapos ng New Year, that uh, 12 o'clock, okay, you would hear, maybe in the city, mas wala. I was in uh, Tainan, you know, when uh, the clock strike 12, okay, you would hear all the bomb going out. Wow, it's deafening, okay. Ngayon, wala na rin. Uh, in the Philippines, we have that in the past, but right now, Bad na rin, di ba? Okay, wala na rin. So, so they heard this, and so they were very afraid, especially the kid was very afraid. So, when the son was very afraid, he looked at his mom, and he told his mom, he said, Mom, sing some song, because I, I'm afraid. And the mom said, you know, with this going on, you know, I don't have the heart to sing. You know, I don't want to sing, okay? But the child, the, the son continued to say, you need to sing to me. You need to sing for me. And so the mother asked, what do you want me to sing for you? And the kid said, mom, sing for me a song called God is still on the phone. God is still on the phone. Now, actually, the title is God is still on the throne. <laughs> but the boy, you know, as he listened to this kind of song, so he think that God is still on the phone. And so the mother started to sing this song. He said, you know, uh, God is still on the phone. He never forsake his own. His promise is true. He will not forget you, but God is still on the phone. <laughs> and so after singing, Okay, the boy said to his mom, now let us pray. Let us ask the Lord to take all the bungs away, the explosion away. And so they started to pray. And when the mother started to pray, at the middle, you know, the boy fell asleep. And throughout the night, when the bombing was going on, you know, the boy was sleeping very soundly as if he did not hear anything. Okay, when morning comes, when this boy uh, awakened, he said to his mom, he said, Mom, isn't it wonderful? You see, God is on the phone. We call him up, and, you know, he stopped all the bombing, the bombing. But in reality, you know, it comes the whole night. But God has preserved the heart so that she, he was not able to hear all those. And he was at rest. And they rejoiced together because God was still on the phone. My brothers, sisters, yes, God is still on the throne and he rules. Not only that he is on the throne, he is also on the phone. That we could always come to him, we could always call him up, we could always pour out anything that we feel, or the struggle that we have, or the desperation that we feel. And God will always be answering us with his voice that will bring peace, that will bring joy, that will bring help to all our needs. So may God help us. And so whenever we are desperate on something or we feel a sense of desperation, you know, the first thing we need to do, not to find other people and then to uh, continue to pour out because that would not change anything. Okay, the feeling of desperation would continue to be there. But whenever we pour out to God, God is going to bring upon us 
a peace that surpasses all understanding, a joy okay, that, uh, that knows no limit, and that we would be able to experience God in our lives. His presence will give us the strength to continue to move forward. So this is the first thing, pour out our desperation to God. Why not tell the person beside you, you need to pour out your desperation to God. <laughs> ah. okay, tell the person beside you, because mostly yung katabi nyo is uh, either family members or friend, di ba? Do not pour your desperation on me. <laughs> okay, don't uh, use me as a garbage or in you pour out a lot of things. Okay, nothing happens. Okay. And sometimes whenever people pour something on us, what happens? Not only that they are not helped, but it affects us, isn't it? Tayo din na apektuhan. Okay? And so, the most important thing is to pour our desperation to God. Okay? Now, the second thing that uh, Hannah did, okay, so that he was able to find peace and joy, uh, able to overcome yung feeling of desperation is she poured out yung desperation. Out of his anguish, he poured out his soul out of his, her great anguish and grief. It is where she finds strength, comfort, peace, and joy. Okay. Now, the second thing that he did, okay, and through his prayer, we see something. Okay. In verse 11, let's all read together the, his, her prayer to the Lord. Okay. And she made a vow saying, O Lord Almighty, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. And no razor will ever be used on his head. Okay. So here she made a vow and she came before the Lord and she prayed. This is her prayer. Look at her prayer. She said, O Lord Almighty. One of the things she's acknowledging is that God is Almighty. Now what does he mean by Almighty? That in God, nothing is impossible. He is acknowledging that, you know, the problem that she had, not being able to bear child, you know, with God, this is not something that is hard God could do anything about it. He could be able to give her sons and daughters. And so, first of all, he came and he acknowledged that he is the Almighty God who is in control of everything, who sits on the throne. And then he, she said, if you will only look upon your servant's misery and remember me and, forget, and not forget your servants but give her son, then I will give to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. Second thing we notice is not only he, uh, he addressed God as Almighty, but he addressed himself as ano, a servant of the Lord. He acknowledged that God is the Almighty, nothing is impossible, that he is in control of everything, he is the Lord, and that he, she herself is a servant. A servant is one who submits, a servant who one who uh, who obeys, a servant who is one who just follow after what the master would want, and so he, she acknowledged that she is a servant, and then so she came before the Lord and said, "Lord, you are Almighty. I am your servant. You know, I hope that I could be have a kids, okay, son. And if I have a son, what does he want to do? I am going to give you back my son. Okay, all of his days he will serve you, and no razor will ever be used." On his head now. What does it mean by the razor? You know, there's a vow in the Old Testament, what we call the Nazareth vow. Once you vow to be a Nazareth, you are always, you would always, uh, forever belong to God, wherein you become someone that serve God all of your life. It is like a pastor today that, you know, we, we come before the Lord and then we commit our lives and uh, become a minister of God for the rest of our lives. Okay? So, Hannah is praying to the Lord and he said, Lord, if you give me one, I'm going to give you my son. And she will, uh, he will serve you the rest of his life and he would be a Nazareth, a servant of yours. Okay. You know, from this prayer, we see something. Hannah did not consider something. You know, if he asked for a son and God gave him a son, after three years of raising these kids, he need to uh, bring this son to the temple and then what? To leave his son in this temple and never again will his son come back to the family. In other words, he will be losing yung son niya. And so someone said, you know, it is better not to have children than to have one, but itong uh, anak mo, then you, uh, you, 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 you feed for, uh, you raise up for three years, and after that, you are giving it out again, and then never to see that child again. It will be more tormenting, isn't it? 
But here we see something about the prayer of Hannah. She acknowledged one thing, that in her life, although she longed for a son, but God is in control. Not only in his life, God is in control. Even if God gave him a son, it is also God is in control. God is what? The master of, uh, he's the Lord of yung son niya. And so he's willing to give everything and to commit yung life niya as well as the kid to, to God. And if after he had this son, okay, what would happen to her? Will she have another son? She doesn't know. But she doesn't care about all of these things. She came before the Lord, she expressed her desires, and she did one thing. She commit her life to the Lord. Not only yung life niya, even the life if God will give yung kids niya, even if this kid would be given to God, what would happen to yung life niya? Would she have another kid? You know, all of this, he just bring to the Lord, surrender them, and commit them all to the Lord. And so, here we see something. When she commit her life, her son, and her future to the Lord, you know, we believe one thing that if we allowed God to be the Lord of our lives, to be in charge of our life, then good things will happen. Because our God is a good God. Our God is a glorious God. And God never withhold good things from His children and those that He lead. And so here, Hannah experienced something. He experienced the comfort knowing that, you know, God is in control. Psalms 37 verse 5, it says, Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will and he will do it, okay? Commit your ways to the Lord, trust in him, and he will do it. So Hannah realized one thing. She knows one thing that it is all in the hands of God. And when it is in the hands of God, then it will be good, it will be secured, and God is going to bring his purpose and his blessing upon this life. And that's why he is willing. And when he gave it to the Lord, you know, he gained something. He finds strength, he finds peace, and he find something that help him to face yung situation niya. Now, in praying for this, is Hannah bargaining with the Lord. And he said, Lord, just give me, and I'm going to give my son. You know, uh, I think a lot of times, we sometimes do this. Our prayer is like this, Lord, let me win lotto, and I'll give 10% to you. Or I will give 20%, and even 50% I'm going to give to the church. Just let me win yung loto. You know, our prayer is like this. This is what bargaining with the Lord. But Hannah is not bargaining because, you know, by asking, he's going to lose more than that. He's going to lose yung sanya. He He's going to lose yung relationship with the son. You know, it would be devastating for her. But she is willing because she acknowledged one thing, that God is the Lord of her life and that God is the Lord of the, the son that God will be given. And even their future is in the hands of God. My brothers and sisters, whenever we learn to acknowledge God's lordship, and we will learn to commit to him everything, we know that we are in the good hands. And this will bring courage, will bring peace and joy to us. So the second thing we need to do, not only we pour out our desperation to God, we need to commit our lives to God. Acknowledging that, you know, he is in control. He is a good God. And I know one thing. In his hand, everything would be beautiful. And there would be great things that would happen. And great things that would happen. Because God has a purpose. God's purpose for us is to, not to harm us, but to prosper us. And we will always experience prosperity in God. So this is the thing. We learn to commit our lives to Him. Believing that in God, you know, life would be better. He is in control of everything else. May God help us. Now, the third thing that uh, Hannah did, not only he poured out his desperation to God, he commit her life, the whole of her life, the sons and her future. The third thing that he did, in verse 17 to 20, let's all read together. Eli answered, God, go in peace and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked Him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something. And her eye, face was no longer downcast. Okay. So uh, as they were conversing, okay, Eli knew that she was praying out of young, uh, out of young, uh, great anguish and grief, something. But Hannah did not mention anything okay, 
to a lie. Okay, nor the problem that she, okay, the provocation that has been happening in her life. Okay, but upon hearing this, Eli said, "Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of Him." What Eli is saying is that you may God grant you because God is a God who hears prayer, and in fact, He promised that whenever we pray, okay, in uh, the promise to Solomon, whenever we come to the Lord in His temple, we pray. God is going what to listen. No matter you're Jewish or you're Gentiles, whenever we come before the temple of God, God promised that He will listen. And so, what Eli is telling si Hannah is that God is going to hear your prayer because He's a God who listens and who responds. And so, upon saying this in verse 18, she said, Hannah said, May your servant find favor in your eyes. And then she went away because, you know, she believed it. She believed that the God that they believe in, the Jehovah that they believe is the God who hears our prayer and who responds because He is true to all His promises. And so He holds on this promise that God is a God who listens to our prayers. And because He holds on to the promise, she finds strength, she finds hope in it because God is going to do something because she had prayed. Okay. In verse 19 to 20, here, early the next morning, they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and they went back to their home at Ramah. Elkanah lay with Hannah, his wife, and the Lord, what? Remember her. Another version, he said, and the Lord answered her prayer. So in the course of time, Hannah conceived and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. So Hannah experienced something. The God who promised to listen and to work through your prayers now, and he experienced God coming and giving him a son. And so he was, okay, he was joyful. And that's why he gave his son name Samuel. Now what does it mean? Because I asked the Lord for him and God is faithful to give to me. And so here we see something about Hannah. Something that gave him the strength, the hope, is that God is a true God and God is faithful. God is faithful to his promises. Whatever God said, it will always come to pass. And that's why 2 Corinthians 1.20 reminds us. He said, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. It means to say, whatever God promised, everything will be fulfilled. Now, right now, it is not fulfilled. It doesn't mean to say God is not fulfilling it. But God has His timing. God has His way of doing things. God has His plan for our lives. But one of the things that we could be assured of, that His promises... That when we ask, what? We will receive. Okay. When we knock, the door will be open us. When we seek, we will find. Now, this is the promise of God to us. A promise that our prayer will be heard and will be answered by God. And so here, Hannah hold on to this promise. He hold on to the promise of God. And that is why he was able to overcome and rise above her desperation. My brothers, sisters, if there is some promise that we hold on, it will give us the strength because the word of God is true. Whenever God says something, He is going to fulfill it. And whenever we followed and we obeyed and we hold on and we believe, then something good is going to happen. There was a uh, police by the name of Roger Whip. Okay. And so he had a lot of mga cases wherein uh, she need, uh, he needed to investigate and then through mga interviews, okay, mga evidence, verbal evidence, he need to write it in yung notebook na lag, okay? Wherein when he's called to testify on the court and he need to present yung written uh, uh, document, okay? They don't uh, uh, they accept yung uh, verbal, but they need request a original form at the court, okay? And one day, you know, when he, uh, he went to the office, he find out that yung uh, logbook niya, notebook in the locker was missing. He doesn't know where it is. And he was called to testify on the court on that issue. Meron isang uh, record that he had done. And so he need to testify, he need to bring itong testimony or evidence to the court. But he cannot find it, nawala. And so he, he started to panic and said, Paano ba yan? He is a Christian, but he doesn't know where it is. And so he prayed to the Lord and said, Lord, I need to know where this, uh, this my notebook is because I need it sa, sa court. And so as he was praying, God prompted him. God spoke and speak to, to him and said, go and look at the garbage can. And he said, 
bakit? How can? How did my notebook went to the garbage can? But that voice said, "You go there, you go there, and you go there." And so God had spoken, and so reluctantly he listened, and so he went to the garbage, uh, the garbage can, and he started to look at it. You know, garbage can. There are a lot of things, de ba? mga mga tirang mga pagkain in there, and then she was went through it, and he was able to find your notebook. And then he was able to find na uh, why is it yung notebook na was in the garbage can because one of yung uh, colleagues na is envy of him. And that's why uh, he was to find fault. So he just took yung uh, notebook and then threw it in the garbage. And so knowing that, so he would make sure na every time when he put in yung notebook niya sa locker, he would uh, uh, lock it out so that it would be there. Okay. But after a few weeks, one day when he went there, again, he was not able to find yung notebook niya. And so he was thinking, where did this guy took my notebook and where did he dispose it? And so he tried to find, he went to the, to the garbage, he, he was trying to find it. And then he cannot find it, so he prayed to the Lord. And that time the Lord said, you know, sabi niya, don't mind that uh, notebook. Di na bale. Okay, just forget about it. And he said, no, because, you know, if I've been called to court, I need this as evidence. So I need to find it because, you know, I'm a policeman. I cannot do this verbally. But that voice said, trust me, you don't need it. You just forget about it. And so he started to have a new notebook for bagong cases. Okay. Okay. And so time passed. But after 18 months, he was called to give evidence of what he had written sa notebook niya. And so that day, when he heard this, you know, he started to panic because, you know, 18 months ago, nawala na. And God said, don't mind it. And right now, you know, the court wants him to go and present that evidence. And he said, Lord, bakit ganun? You know, you told me not to find it, but right now, kailangan na. Paano yan? How can I face it? So he cannot do anything. So that day, he need to appear before the court. And so he need to confess na, you know, 18 months ago, you know, the notebook, nawala, so I cannot find it, so I cannot have any evidence. So, of course, that will be a bad reputation on him. Okay? And so that day he was full of anguish, and then he went there to the court. But when he arrived at the court, you know, the clerk at the court said, you know, uh, the, 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 the case has been dismissed already this morning. Kung, ah, bakit? He said, you know, they don't need your evidence. They have other evidence. <laughs> okay, so the court, tapos na. So they don't need your evidence. And that is where he experienced something. 18 months ago, God said, don't look for it. Just leave, leave it. You don't need it. And it's proved true. After 18 months, it proved na what God said is true. And he experienced something. He experienced that God's word is true. And if he could only believe it, you know, he could be able to experience yung uh, uh, feeling of being free and then uh, the joy and the peace that comes. My brothers, sisters, the same thing. God's word is always true. Whatever God promises, there are yes in Christ Jesus. And so for us who are going through feeling of desperation because of something that is happening in our lives, you know, there would be sometimes things that even if we pray, nothing happens. And we always expect the worst that will come. And then we wondered and asked, Lord, why? I believe all the time, Hannah has been asking, Lord, why did you uh, not give me okay, uh, the, 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 to, to have children? Okay. She had a lot of questions. But even in desperation, even though God has not yet given her sons, she experienced joy and peace. She was able to arise above her desperation. Why? One thing, because he went to the Lord, he poured out her heart, okay, out of young uh, desperation and grief, he poured out everything to the Lord, and there he find peace and he find joy. Second, he's willing to, she's willing to commit her life, and even the child that will be given, and even young future now, what it would happen. He acknowledged one thing, God is in control. And when he committed to God, you know, he find freedom because when God is in control, you know, God is going to do something that is great. Third, he hold on to the promise that God is a God who hears her prayers. And that is why he find hope, he find help. My brothers and sisters, may God help us 
Same way when we are going through any desperations, any situation, and we cannot find the solution. May we go to God rather than to not go to other people, but to God and then pour out whatever is in our heart. And then we commit to God knowing that it is in a good hands. And when we have something that we could hold on, the promise of God, it will give us strength, it will give us comfort, and it will give us hope. Because when God says something, He is going to deliver it. May God help us. So why not let us close our eyes right now. Let us come before the Lord. Let us bring our feeling of desperation to God this morning. I don't know what is happening right now in your life. I don't know what is you're facing right now. Maybe it is something that is done with your job, with your work. Maybe it has something to do with the people that you work with. Maybe it is something that uh, you have problems with your neighbors or relationship at home or with your kids or with yourself or whatever it is. And those things have been accumulated again and again. Those helplessness, those frustrations, and that you are very desperate. God could always be able to deliver us if we could only come to Him and pour out whatever we feel in His presence. When we learn to commit to Him our situation and even our lives, knowing that God is working, and when we hold on to His promise, He's a God who listens and a God who answers, then we will be able to find joy, peace. We will be delivered. So why not let us take this time right now to come before the Lord. This is a time wherein we pray to God. We pour out to Him. Out of our anguish and grief, we pour our soul to the Lord who is faithful and to the Lord who is almighty. Why not let us take this time right now to pray for ourselves. Father, as we come before you, Lord, this morning, we thank you because you are God who hears our prayers. A God who sees, a God who knows what is happening in our lives. And a God, Lord, who is almighty and that nothing is impossible with you. Father, as we lift up, Lord, all that is happening in our lives, things, Lord, that brings a feeling of hopelessness, and even in times when we are desperate, Lord, we could always come to you and find strength and find help. I mean, right now, Lord, you come upon us that through this message and your words, just like Hannah, Lord, we hold on to your words and to your promises, Lord. And brothers and sisters, as we close our eyes, as we are praying, I just want to take this time to pray for some of us. You've been going through these kinds of circumstances for a very long time. And you cannot find a way out of it. But God wants you to know that He never forgets you. But He is working His way. Right now, you are not seeing something that is changing. It is because God has not yet finished 
doing what He planned for your life. And if we could only have the patience and the faith to trust in Him, He will help us see through all of this. And in waiting, we could always find peace and joy. So I want just to pray for some of us. Would you please raise up your hands? I just want to pray for you and ask the Lord to give you something this morning. A words that would speak to your heart, that will strengthen your heart. Yes, I've seen your hands. You could put them down. Yes, I've seen your hands. Anyone else? You said, Lord, I need you to come and give me a promise or a word that would strengthen me. Yes, I've seen your hands. Anyone else? Yes, I've seen your hands. Yes, I've seen your hands. Yes, I've seen your hands. So why not let us all stand up right now? Let us come to the Lord, the God who sees, the God who answers our prayers. Father, as we come before you, Lord, this morning, we thank you, Lord, for you're a God who hears, a God who sees, and a God who will do something because your plan for us is to prosper us. Father, you know the desperation that we feel, the hopelessness that linger as we go through, Lord, our circumstances day by day, week by week, and even month by month, Lord. But we know one thing, Lord, that you, have, you are working and that you have not yet finished your work in us and that you are doing something, Lord, to bring about your purpose in our lives. Father, we need a faith to trust in you. We need a new faith, Lord, to hear, to see, and to be assured, Lord, that you are there, that you understand, and that you are working, Lord. Lord, you know our problems. And right now, Lord, I just pray, Holy Spirit, come, Lord, and speak your words to them. That small voice, Lord, will come upon them for them to hear your words, your promise, Lord. For them to find that strength and confidence. For them to know, Lord, that you care for them. Father, may you come right now. Holy Spirit, fill them and touch their hearts. As we stand before you, Lord, we thank you and we praise you for we know one thing, that you have proven your faithfulness, Lord, and your love by coming, Lord, and by dying on the cross for us and giving us, Lord, a way for us to come to you and experience a life and experience the grace that we needed. Right now, Lord, we want, Lord, to come before your table, Lord, and to partake, Lord, of the grace that is available for us. Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread and when he had given things, he broke it and said, This is my body which is for you, and do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until I come. Father, we thank you, Lord, for we know one thing that one day you are coming back for us to bring us, Lord, into your glory. The glory, Lord, that you have prepared for us for eternity where we would be able to experience, Lord, a life that is different. Father, as we wait for you, we thank you because your grace is sufficient for us and that you continue, Lord, to sustain us. And as we come, Lord, before your table, we just want, Lord, to thank you for the provision, Lord, that you have made through your death and that we are experiencing something, Lord, that would help us, that will strengthen us, Lord. Father, as we come to your table, may you cleanse our hearts. May we come, Lord, with a clear conscience, Lord, to partake, Lord, of, Lord, the grace that is available for us. Father, I thank you, Lord, and I praise you, Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated.
our communion is for those who have already been baptized. Before, uh, if you're not yet baptized, let us uh, refrain from taking the bread and the cup. And we could join us by praying and coming before the Lord, giving thanks for all that He has done for us. So no matter you're baptized in our church or in other churches, we welcome you to partake of this communion. And for those who have not yet been baptized, you know, we have baptism that is coming. You could uh, register okay, so that we would be able to arrange a baptismal service for you. May we all stand up, please. Let us all partake of the bread, the body that is broken for us. Let us all partake of the cup, the blood that has been shed for the forgiveness of our sin. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the grace that is available for us this morning. We thank you, Lord, because you are a God who hears, who listens, Lord, and who works wonders in our lives. As we lift up, Lord, all that we are going through, the desperation, Lord, in our circumstances, but we know one thing, that you are a God who is faithful to your promise and that you will see us through. And at the same time, Lord, your purpose for us is to prosper us, Lord, and we thank you, Lord. May you continue, Lord, to strengthen us as we come before your presence, Lord. And as we stand before you, may you bless each one of us. May the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each one of us until the day that Christ will come back and bring us into his glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. be seated as we take a few minutes of silence before the Lord. few friends with us okay as i we have a few friends with us if uh, as i called on your name please do stand up so that we can recognize you and we can welcome you properly jason saita okay welcome you jason okay uh katherine osaita okay oh, osaita okay and Lance Henry, uh, Hen Kennery, 
Okay, Lance Kennery Osaita. Okay, they're family. Okay, we welcome you and we welcome you and we welcome you. Okay, for all, uh, okay, let's us all stand up and let's us sing, sing our song.